Hi everybody, it's almost Christmas time and John Bowen here. I'm about to release the version 2.0 software for the Solaris. And I thought I'd make a video of it showing you what to do, what the new functions are, and so on. I did make an addendum, which I've posted on the forum site, so you can read about all the new features. But I know that it's always good to actually see it in operation. So that's what I'm going to do with this next video, and um, hope you enjoy it. Hi, so I'm going to go ahead now and explain the operation of the new version 2.0 software for the Solaris. I'm going to be using the addendum as a kind of a guide as I go through this video. First thing is when we're in preset mode. Preset mode is always shown as three pages. One of them is the first page where the program name, bank, program, filter for the categories and so on. Second page is the performance features. Uh, you can assign any parameter and put it up to uh, a row of five knobs. So you can have five parameters that you can offset uh, in real time. And the third page showed us 10 at a time of the programs that were in the currently selected bank. The new uh, page now, page four, shows us that we're on, in this case, bank zero, program 51, and what's in each part, or what the original uh, sound was for each part. And you can see that this is an old preset that's been loaded in and converted, um, and it just has part one as the original sound. Now the new presets are four times the size of the old presets. And that means that there's nothing in parts two, three, and four. Well, it says in, in that sound here, but um, there won't be any particular sound until you load it in. So what you can do is you can start combining other older presets uh, in this way, and I'll show you that in a, in a moment. So this tells me that I'm on part one. And as you can see here, the uh, part number can be selected with this first button over here. And what that does is that changes the front panel control so that if you wanted to edit other than part one, uh, if you had several parts going on, you would just wanna switch that down to a different part. Now there are a couple of other ways to change the part, which I'll show you in a bit. So we go back to the main page one of the preset mode. You'll notice now that the soft key labels are consistent. Prior to this, in the older software, the soft keys, the labels of them depended on what you had last used in that area. But now these always come up when the preset light is on and also when the home page is on. So it's a fixed assignment now for those six keys. And as I was showing you, the first one is the part number. Second one is the arpeggiator sequencer group. Uh, the third button is the new multi group. There are seven pages there. The next button is utilities and that's basically where you build up uh, a multi-mode. The effect settings and the system in MIDI is the sixth button there. So that's what we have from the new preset mode. So one other thing that's been changed is the performance page, page two in preset mode. How we assign parameters. Uh, it's been changed. So now what you do is you go select the parameter that you'd like to change first. So I'm going to touch the filter cutoff um, and immediately it jumps out of preset mode, right? And it goes into edit mode. And you'll see on the bottom line, part one, P1 is part one, fill one tune. So that's filter one's tuning or, or cutoff. And that is the parameter that's active currently. 
To assign it to the performance knobs, you have to hit preset button again and bring that back into preset mode. Hold down shift and then adjust the knob that you want the filter one tuning, in this case, offset to be applied. And so this will now give us plus or minus 100% uh, offset of whatever that, uh, whatever the uh, program value was. And if you want to delete that, you simply hold shift and turn the top knob and that clears it. Let's now go to the new feature of multi mode. By pressing multi, you'll see in the lower right side one slash seven. That means there are seven pages for the multi mode. What had happened is that we had a couple of different ways to display the data. And with the beta test group, it was pretty evenly divided which, uh, which grouping was more advantageous. So we ended up putting everything in. However, if you want to work with one of the seven pages consistently, well, when you leave this set of screens to go do something else, when you come back here, it'll retain that page that you're working on. So you'll understand better here in a second. Here we're looking at part one, whether it's enabled or not, and it is enabled, you can change it with the uh, enable part button, or you can turn the knob. This says how many voices are assigned, and the voice assignment is in pairs because each of the five voice DSPs uh, can produce two voices, uh, and have to produce two voices, let's say. Volume for each part, the low key range, the high key range for the key windowing, and same for the velocity. For keyboard range, uh, you can first turn the parameter to activate it, then hold down shift and hit a key, and that'll set. So now it's not playing below that uh, G sharp four. Or of course you can just dial it in. I use the page down and this is the second page. It tells us again the name, the MIDI channel and this is new. It says global and the global channel is whatever the instrument is set uh, to over in the system MIDI pages. Of course you can turn it off to individual channels. This again tells us that channel one in this case is the global channel. Uh, transposition, plus or minus 63 semitones. And the fine tuning next to it, plus or minus 100 cents. And the panning position for that part. And on this page, if you want to change the part number, since this button is uh, adjusting the channel, this knob can change the part. Because now the soft key that did the part is no longer available. Next page, page three, the lower position is blank, so that means this knob can now change the part. And that's gonna be true for the next four pages. This just tells us whether or not the pitch wheel, the joystick, position X and Y, ribbon one and two, aftertouch, mod wheel, sustain pedal and expression pedal are active for the part. And so those first three pages were the old, or, or one of the ways of showing the data. There was an interest, however, to show all four parts at once. So the last pages, four, five, six, and seven, are in that format. So here we can see 10 voices for part one, volume is 110, transposition, low key, high key. And again, here, first you have to activate it, hold it down, hold down shift, press the key, and 
So you can do the same thing, but just the data is shown a little bit differently. Here, the bottom knob is going to be able, again, to move the part. Next page, page five. This tells us the channels of each of the parts, panning position, fine tune, low velocity and high velocity. Page six, whether the pitch wheel, mod, wheel, joystick, X and Y, and after touch are active for the part. And page seven, whether the ribbon, the two ribbon outputs are active, sustain pedal or the expression pedal. So those are the new screens for the multi-page. Now, let's say you'd like to work on this page when you're setting up your multis. So, if we go to the next screen here, which is the utility screen. Okay, there's a couple of ways to get there. But I'm going to just press the more button. And that's the utility page. And here, I mean, we're back with part one. So we now have soft key up there to change the part. And we're in the part load screen. I can change the bank with this knob. I can change the part with this knob. So those line up with the labels. The upper two knobs will scan through the current bank's presets. And of course, if I change the bank and then change the preset this way. You can see that on the right side, the current preset selected doesn't have anything in parts two, three, and four. So those are just dashes there. We just had that one sound. But what, what we can do, that's the, the current sound. What we can do is change it to part two. And let's say we're gonna load in, well, let me go back to bank zero. So we want to load in a bass sound. Well, the enter button is flashing. Part two is lit. I can turn on part two to activate it and load tour space into there. Now you'll see this multi with an arrow next to it. That is a shortcut because I oftentimes would be going back and forth between this utility page and multi-page. So we press that and now we're back to this uh, page. Now you'll notice that instead of 10 voices, it says eight. And when we loaded the part, we automatically pulled two voices or one DSP in to give us some sound for the bass. And if we turn off part one, Indeed, we can hear the Taurus bass sound. And if we go back out to our page that shows the names of the four parts in preset mode, we can see now that we have that original part plus the bass sound there. Now let's go adjust in the multi page. Let's change the key range. So let's say I want the bass to play from the low key up to a high key of, uh, okay, so I have to activate it first. I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna play C4. And so now I wanna make the top part stop at C sharp four. So we'll have, and then I'll turn part one back on. So we have the bass sound there. And the other sound there. If we now go to the utility page, again, if you're in the multi-page, the next more button page is the utility page. We can also rename the part. We can copy part one to part two or part two to part four or however you want. Or you can just swap parts. 
And when doing the naming, the the whole naming system has been updated as well in version 2.0. You can this is true also for naming the preset as well as naming the parts. So it's basically the same new feature. The lower knobs are labeled as to what they do. Cursor will move the cursor from left to right up to 24 or five characters. This knob will affect the capital, uh, you know, the uppercase. Second one is lowercase numbers and symbols. And in each of these categories, the first one is a, always a space. So you can just dial up that way, move the cursor. Maybe you want a lowercase there. And maybe you want a number there and so on. So that's the new naming uh, page. If you want to take a look at the naming page for the preset, here I have a restored preset mode and I hit the store button and of course it allows me to reassign the destination bank or location and if I have an empty location which I do there I can select that as a new destination hit the store again and I have again the same cursor uppercase lowercase and so on that I can use for the naming. The bank and the program in this case are just there uh, just to let you know where you are. A word about the arpeggiators and sequencers. You'll see, by the way, that when you're in multi-mode, you're still able to select the ARP or sequencer pages. And that's because I felt that the interaction between those uh, probably the most important while you're doing things in real time. Uh, and it's important to remember that these arpeggiators uh, and four layered sequences or sequence parameters are separate per part. Okay. So if we do have a split sound, which I changed, <laughs> uh, the arpeggiation won't affect, you know, it'll be separate per part. Now I want to talk about the use of the enable part buttons and a couple other things here. So I've made up a sound that has two parts, a marimbi or peg from uh, one of my presets in Digital Harpy. And they're layered right now. There's two parts that are on. If we turn off Part two, that's the marimbi. And if we turn that off, put on part two, that's the digital. So they're pretty uh, percussive, so similar in that way. But what I want to show is when they're layered, um, you can do a couple of things. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's play a arpeggiation first. And I'm gonna say I'm in part one and mode is as played and over on the left side i'm going to turn on the arpeggiator and i'm going to put on the hold button so this will latch everything i play right and we're only hearing part uh, part one arpeggiate turn off part one, it's gone, and we can hear part two. However, the notes we just played are still active for part one. So one of the things you might want to do is uh, not change those while you're doing another part. Uh, and of course you can zone things out, but here's another thing you can do. Let's uh, Double click, we'll also select part two in this case. There's a couple of different ways to do the part selection. And I'm going to turn on ARP and hold for part two. And if 
I change the mode? the multi we'll see that both of those guys are on the same channel so they're both going to be playing the same part if I want to solo a part I hold it down and the part uh, enable part button blinks and we are just listening now to part one and you press it again and now we're back to both parts hold it down for a half second now we're listening to part two. In fact, you can hold both of them down and have them both solo. And you can also do the soloing from the assign buttons or foot pedals, by the way. Uh, in any case, let's say we want to have this guy going, and that's part one. But I, I set that up by playing the parts I want. Alright, here, let's do a lower part. And now if I change the MIDI channel off of global, now playing the keyboard won't do anything because the keyboard's on channel 1. And I can turn on and we can listen to part 2. I will turn on part one. And now I'll just play uh, different notes on part two. So that's one way we can uh, continue to play. Another thing is, if you turn off a part, let's say you're sequencing or arpeggiating multiple parts, now that you are not listening to it, but the keyboard still feeds it. So now I'm going to change the notes to part two, play a C minor triad with an F, and now I turn this back on, and the notes have changed. So in this way, you're able to perform live with the arpeggiators, set up several going on at once, and um, by changing the channel, as I did, you can isolate uh, the current part, or you can set up a big split and just have your uh, have your, each part only arpeggiate over that range. The other thing is, uh, if you use the octave buttons over on the left and you press both of them at the same time, like so, hold those down and then press any key related to C4, you'll transpose by that value. So if we go back, turn our thing back on, hold down the two octave buttons, and I'm gonna play a minor third up from C. And now that shifts the whole keyboard. In fact, if you go to the uh, system page, you'll see the master's transpose is up a plus three. And if you hold the octave buttons again and hit C4, you'll be back to regular pitch. Now let's say you have your arpeggiations going, but you have a couple of things you want to do. Maybe you want to stop everything or turn off hold for everything. If you want to just stop the arpeggiation of one of the parts, you select the part. Again, uh, you can also do the part selection this way. Select the part and just turn it off and then start a new one. Or you can hold shift and home and that dumps all the notes that you played 
for both arpeggiators. And now you could go back. Of course, we have to go back to the multi and uh, put this guy back on. Um, but if you hold shift and arp on, that'll shut off all arpeggiators that are going. If you hold shift and the whole button, that'll turn off hold for all of the parts. And same if you're using the sequencer. Now let's say you want to add a few more parts. So let's go to the part load page again. And now I'm going to go to part three. And if I press the button that turns it on uh, and enables the part and then also selects the panel to part three. And let's go pick, oops, let's leave it with part three. Let's go pick a different bank. Um, and this preset, enter button, enter button is blinking. So I press enter and now my part three Let's turn off one and two. Is that again? If we look at the multi page, um, we can see that uh, there are four voices again automatically pulled two voices from the previous uh, part one so that we have instantly another sound. And everybody's on the same MIDI channel, the global channel. So we have our four parts, or three parts. Like so. And last one. Let's go to part four. Let's load from Profit Sync. Press enter. And now we have on part four that guy. And again, if we take a look at the overview of all four parts, four voices, two, two, and two in this case. And of course you can change the assignments and the volume and so on. So that's how you can create new multis. And again, the arpeggiation, sequencing, and actually all the information, pretty much all the information in the home button is separate per part. The only thing in the home button I think that is new is clock sync. And this parameter is actually uh, synchronizes all four parts, all the clocks, so that all of the arpeggiators are, uh, or sequences are in sync with each other. Uh, other thing that might be new here, I don't quite remember, sample pool is assigned and there's only one sample pool per multi preset. Can have multiple samples playing uh, at different parts, uh, at least not now. I did mention that under the assign buttons, you can solo and same with the uh, Oops, same with the foot pedals. So you can use the pedals or the assign buttons to solo a part. And in fact, since those are separate per part, you can have multiple solos, or multiple parts soloed with the one foot switch that way, or one button. Okay. For the effects, just as a reminder, the effects are only one set of effects for the whole multi-preset. And you'll 
when you load the old presets in, that'll load the effects from there as your default. And if you want to make any adjustments after that, uh, then you just go ahead and edit those. Okay. Here we have now that uh, we're looking on page four of the preset node, and it shows us that bank zero, program 62, has four parts loaded, and those are the names of the original sounds. Of course, you can change those names. There are, it's always good to have a, some remembrance of what it is. There's something I forgot to show you with the way the enable part buttons used to work and the way they work now. So I'm going to do a quick follow-up patch here. So there are four elements in the sound, right? Four VCAs. And what we used to do is you use the enable parts to show you which were active and which were not. But now these are actually showing which parts are enabled as the label actually says. So what you knew do now is you hold down the shift button and you'll see that those enable parts switch and this this is one of my early presets uh, factory presets that has three parts or three uh, VCAs going let's say three elements so if you just hold down shift you'll get a view of what those buttons used to represent okay so that's it and a new feature. So that's it for the basic functions. I'm going to do a separate video to explain the phase modulation oscillator type. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the operation of version 2.0, please send me an email at info at johnbowen.com and look forward to getting your feedback. Thanks so much for watching.